nephrotic syndrome. Now, what is the definition of this? This is characterized by proteinuria that is more than 3.5 grams per 24 hours. In addition to that, patient also has hypoalbuminemia. Then patient also has generalized edema or anasarca. Well, here I like to add something. When we talk about edema, edema means perhaps we are mainly talking of the pedal edema or maybe sacral edema. But anasarca means patient not only has edema, that means no, patient also may have pleural effusion and pericardial effusion. Anasarca means fluid in the third space. But for all clinical purposes, when we talk about, we use the term as edema because it is the edema that can be seen on general physical examination. That's why we can use either anasarca or edema. So I hope things are clear to you. What else is there? Patient has hyperlipidemia. Why this occur, I'll be discussing later on. And of course, we may have lipid urea also. Now, first of all, one more thing I'd like to clarify. Nephrotic syndrome is not a single disease. Rather, it's not a single disease in itself. Rather, it simply indicates severity of protein urea. And one more very, very important thing, RBC cast is not a feature of nephrotic syndrome. It's a very important negative point that you got to remember because this is seen in nephritic syndrome. And I have recorded a separate lecture on nephritic syndrome detail you can see in that lecture. Well, now before I discuss the nephrotic syndrome, I like to tell you some basic concept because if, if I talk to you regarding nephrotic syndrome, the four primary renal glomerular disease which lead to nephrotic syndrome are minimal change, glomerular nephritis, membranous glomerular nephritis, FSGS, and that is focal and segmental glomerulosclerosis, MPGN, that is membranoproliferative global nephritis. We will never understand all these unless we know the basic pathology of these, then only we will be able to understand the nephrotic syndrome incomplete. But again, pathology we will never understand unless we know the normal histology. So first of all, basic concept of normal, N for normal, histology of the glomerulus. This is the epithelial cell and these are the foot processes. This is the basement membrane. This is the capillary endothelium. So I label this is endothelium and this is the capillary lumen, CL stand for capillary lumen where the blood is flowing and this is the epithelial cell and these are the foot processes also, called, also known as podocyte and this is the basement membrane. The supporting cell is mesangial cell, MC stand for mesangial cell and this supporting connective tissue is mesangial matrix. This is normal histology. But here I like you to focus on one thing. Look, the pores are there only in the capillary endothelium and that wall which is facing toward the basement membrane. Remember this hole is the, cap is the capillary, this is the endothelial cell and this is the lumen. 
and this is a basement membrane. The pores are there in mainly in the capillary endothelium. And number two, foot process are the part of epithelial cell. This is normal histology. With this background, we move on to pathology of minimal change. In minimal change, what happened? This, this loss of foot process, or so-called fusion of foot process. Now these foot processes are fused and it becomes straight like this. And it is just, it is still there in the position, it is not detached. So in minimal change, what you got is minimal change, loss of foot process, FP is foot process or podocyte. Now let us see what happened in membranous glomerular nephritis. In membranous, antian antibodies are deposited in the subepithelial area. Subepithelial area is between the epithelium and the basement membrane. And this is known as spike and dome pattern. So in membranous, sub epithelial deposition of antigen antibody and this is known as spike and dome pattern now let's see what happened in fsgs fsgs is focal and segmental glomerulosclerosis. Here also loss of foot process occur just like in minimal change and but it get detached from basement membrane. Remember in minimal change it did not get detached and in minimal change there was no antigen antibody deposition. Here in FSGS antigen antibody deposition occurs in the mesangial matrix. So FSGS Loss of foot process and antigen antibody in mesangial matrix. MM stands for mesangial matrix. Now let's see what happened in membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis (MPGN). This is the basement membrane, and here is the epithelial cell. Oh, sorry, this is the mesangial cell. And this polyphrates, this polyphrates and enter the basement membrane. Okay, so I have drawn a bigger uh, diagram. This is the basement membrane and this is the mesangial cell. And this mesangial cell enter the basement membrane and it make tram tract appearance. Well, in addition to that, anti and antibody deposition occurs. We have type 1. In type 1, we have a subendothelial deposition of anti and antibody. What do you mean by subendothelial? Between the endothelium and the basement membrane. So, in type 1, subendothelial deposition of anti and antibody. And we have type 3, it is in the membrane. In the membrane itself, you can see here. So intramembranous deposition occurs. So this you can make a beautiful summary of the of the pathology of of glomerular disease. Now here I like to uh, point out certain important thing. First of all, loss of foot process occur in minimal change, but most of students are not aware that what loss of foot process occur in FSGS also and many authorities do say that minimal change and FSGS they are continuation of the same pathology that's why loss of foot process is occurring in both the condition and but only difference is there is it is not get detached it is got detached from epithelial uh, from the basement membrane point to be noted very carefully okay well with this background one more thing I like to point out. These are the four primary, primary, four primary glomerular disease which can lead to nephrotic syndrome. So when I will be talking to you regarding primary renal disease, glomerular disease to be more precise, that means I am talking about these four entities. With this background of basic pathology, now let me see now.
the subject of nephrotic syndrome is very very simplified now let us see again reminding you <coughs> they are the primary disease which lead to nephrotic syndrome so nephrotic syndrome could be primary glomerular disease now i don't think i need to write it minimal change membranous fsgs and mpgn things are clear to you but remember it that nephrotic syndrome also occur in many other systemic disease also like diabetes sle amyloidosis drugs like gold penicillamine probenecid maybe heroin and captopril and sired okay now i have a question for you stop the video after listening to the question write down the answer this heroin i said is a systemic disease which systemic problem which can lead to uh, nephrotic syndrome but remember it lead to which type of glomerulonephritis out of these four heroin which is a drug addiction can lead to what type of primary glomerular disease write down the answer well i am sure you must have written the answer the answer is fsgs is caused by one of the reason of heroin can lead to fsg fsgs and one more thing which you should know about fsgs it is also caused by in pediatric age group by vesico ureteric reflux so called reflux nephropathy is extra knowledge for you okay few extra knowledge these are these two membranous and mpgn they are also caused by hepatitis b and hepatitis c fsgs is also caused by hiv even minimal change can be caused by hiv and and in fsgs cause occurring in F in hiv is also known as collapsing nephropathy so repeating second time fsgs occurring in hiv is so called collapsing glomerular nephropathy so you got many extra point in the pathology of these four glomerular disease now we talk more about systemic disease which can lead to certain infection endocarditis hepatitis b see i just mentioned this this can also occur in malaria especially plasmodium malariae it can also be caused by syphilis various cancers can cause this problem like hodgkin and other lymphomas leukemias maybe carcinoma of breast colon this can also may occur some allergic reactions can cause this problem but very very important point if somebody asked you what's the commonest cause of nephrotic syndrome in adults the right answer is diabetes but if they ask you commonest cause of nephrotic syndrome in children then it is minimal change children point to be noted it's a primary cause of glomerular disease causing nephrotic syndrome in children but the commonest cause of nephrotic in diabetes is a secondary cause remember he did not ask you question about primary cause if the question is for primary cause out of the four minimal change membranous fsgs and mpgn out of primary cause then the most common is fsgs this is all due to hiv previously it used to be membranous but now it is hiv or, or hiv i told you lead to collapsing type of nephropathy okay i hope things are clear to you well with this background now i'm giving you beautiful summary of the four condition the four primary renal disease which can lead to nephrotic syndrome 
you first make a table with me then i'll make the subject so easy that entire nephrotic syndrome you will be able to revise only in five seconds so let's age this occur in children and this is non-specific 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 now let me clarify what do you mean by non-specific like minimal change occurs usually in children the usual age is two to eight years but as far as other three are concerned they are non-specific they may occur in children and the adults also that's why i have used the term non-specific minimal change usually does not occur in adults now selective protein urea sp selective protein urea what do you mean by selective it means in this only albumin is coming out of the body in the urine only you are getting albumin yes but in other it is non-selective no means it is not selective protein urea it is non-selective now let me clarify what do you mean by non-selective non-selective means other than albumin other proteins also come out in the urine what other protein i'll be talking to you a little later on but just as of now when we talk about nephrotic syndrome in children or minimum chain if you test the urine it will contain only albumin no other proteins will be there response to cs cs is response to corticosteroid yes no 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 what do you mean by this also well in case of minimal change when you give steroid most of the patients they respond very well to steroids they are steroid responsive only in few cases we may be needing some other immunosuppressive drug that's why we call it a steroid responsive glomerulonephritis okay but these they may or may not respond they are not very particular that they will def they are definitely going to respond to steroid this is the reason hypertension is not a feature no one plus two plus three plus that means hypertension will be there hematuria no one plus two plus three plus that means more and more plus means more and more hematuria renal failure rf is a renal failure no yes 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 rf also in particularly if i write chronic renal failure it means these are the patient who these patient can go into chronic renal failure what we call as chronic glomerulonephritis they are the reason why patient can go into crf now complement level normal 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 and for normal and complement level is reduced in mpgn that means the only condition where complement level reduced is mpgn so this gives a beautiful summary of the four primary renal disease which lead to nephrotic syndrome now i promise uh, now this table we can revise only in five seconds how come now stop writing look at the screen now, if I ask you, which disease occurs only in children, which is a select, which response is to selected protein urea, response to steroid, no hypertension, no hematuria, and no renal failure, all the answer is minimal change. Condition having maximum hypertension, maximum hematuria, maximum renal failure, and complement level reduce all the answer is mpgn i hope things are very very clear to you but now i want to really take you to next height of the depth of knowledge next because you can save either depth or height whatever you want to say of the knowledge look at the screen once again if i ask you what the definition of nephritic syndrome so everybody knows nephritic syndrome means protein urea oligurea 
हाइपरटेंशन हिमेच्यूरिया वेल वी टॉक वॉट नेफ्रोटिक सिनो नेफ्रेटिक सिनो प्रोटीन यूरिया इज यूजली यूजली लेस देन टू ग्राम पर डे Usually, but definitely it is definitely less than 3.5. Remember, nephrotic syndrome is more than 3.5 gram of protein per day. But here it is usually less than two, but but definitely less than 3.5. But I am writing less than two. Well, calling urea, that means urine output is less than 400 ml, or I can say all urea is nothing but a type of renal failure. hypertension hematuria now look into mpgn in mpgn we have protein urea yes it is a protein urea that's why we have included in the in the category of nephrotic syndrome does this have oleic urea that renal failure oh yes it is there does this have hypertension oh yes it is there does this have hematuria yes it is there it means in mpgn can has all the feature of nephrotic syndrome okay all the feature are there nephrotic syndrome so if this patient come to you with hematuria hypertension renal failure and complement level reduced remember complement level is reduced in acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis gn stand for glomerulonephritis sc stand for post streptococcal if this patient come to us we cannot differentiate whether we are dealing with post streptococcal and or we are dealing with mpgn remember so it means mpgn is lies in the border zone of nephritic and nephrotic syndrome one more thing you like to appreciate as we are going from minimal change toward mpgn we are getting more and more feature of nephritic syndrome uh, we are persistently getting more and more hematuria hypertension with each step coming down from minimal change to mpgn and one more thing in minimal change majority of time they resolve of on spontaneous resolution occurs they resolve with treatment they become all right and that's why we never do biopsy biopsy is never done in minimal change indication of biopsy in a child with nephrotic syndrome if he has hypertension okay is he has number 1 hypertension number 2 he has a hematuria he has renal failure if complement level is reduced if he is not responding to steroids if he has a non selective protein urea non selective protein urea or he has recurrence there are several indication of doing biopsy in a, even in a child with nephrotic syndrome so i hope you are much wiser about the basic pathology of nephrotic syndrome with this background let's have a quick recap of what we learned in this particular lecture in nephrotic syndrome you get protein urea more than 3.5 g per day hypoalbuminemia edema or generalized and sarca can be there hyperlipidemia and lipid urea why and how this happen this you see in my next lecture on the part 2 of nephrotic syndrome then i'll explain to you everything and nephrotic syndrome is not a single disease it simply indicates severity of protein urea <clears throat> the nephrotic syndrome can be caused by primary glomerular disease like minimal change membranous fsgs and mpgn and many other systemic causes including including the disease like diabetes sla amyloidosis certain cancers certain drugs or it could be due to some allergic phenomena also maybe some infective condition all these can lead to nephrotic syndrome Thank you very much for watching this video.